Here we are, lesson five of the Carnival Tycoon Project. We've done quite a bit up to this point, but we are at the most important and final lesson on what we call expected value. This is the lesson where we really get into the nitty-gritty of how to make a profitable carnival game. We're going to start out with three basic scenarios. Consider these as basic carnival games, about as basic as you can get for this first one. Here is a coin. And the goal of this game is to basically call the coin flip accurately in the air. So the person running the game flips the coin. You had called it in the air, heads, let's see what you get. Oh, it happens to be heads. It costs a dollar to play the game. And if you win, you win $2. So that particular person playing would have paid a dollar, but walked away with two. But it was equally likely for it to come up tails. As a matter of fact, we've already learned about theoretical probability, and we know that the theoretical probability is a 50-50 chance for heads or tails. So, theoretically, you would expect to play the game twice in order to win once. And if you play this game twice, that costs you $2 to win. That's right, $2. So this is a break-even game, and break-even games are not very good for the carnival because the carnival has expenses, and they have to pay the game operators and pay all kinds of expenses, insurance and whatnot. They need to make money on all their games, not break-even. So you wouldn't see a game like this at any reputable carnival anytime soon. How about this scenario with a deck of cards? <clears throat> I have taken out the jokers and the poker directions <laughs> and uh, anything else that doesn't need to be in. There are 52 cards, and we know that there are uh, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. 13 of each, actually. And in this particular game, you pay a dollar to play the game. But if you pick the correct card out of here, well, the correct suit, that is, uh, then you earn $5. So I present you as the operator of this game all these cards and you say, I am going to choose a heart. And you pick a card out of here, and you're hoping that it's a heart. But it happens to be a spade. So you lose a dollar. And you do it again, and you say, well, I really think I can get a heart. And you pick another one that happens to be a club. And you lose another dollar. Well, if you think about theoretical probability, there's a one out of four chance that you're going to pick a heart out of here. So if you play it enough, you're likely to win. At some point, you're likely to pick a heart out of here. As a matter of fact, one out of four chances. And if you pay a dollar to play the game, you will have likely paid four dollars by the time you win. And what do you win? You win five dollars. So this is a really bad game for the carnival because they're going to be giving away $5, theoretically, for every four plays. That only costs the player $4. So they are hemorrhaging money in that particular card game. Let's take a final one. Roll a lucky six on the die. So all you have to do is roll a six to win this game, and we're going to have really high stakes. We're going to give you $100 if you roll a six. That's pretty tempting. But we're also going to charge you $20 to play the game. Well, you might have a spare $20 sitting around in your wallet or your pocket. You might be thinking, well, I could... I could sacrifice that $20 if I didn't win, but wouldn't it be great to actually win $100? What could I do with that? So you decide to play. So we roll it, and you get a four. You lost 20 bucks. Oh, I'm going to play this game again. <laughs> I, know, I really want that chance. And then you're thinking, I got to earn back that $20 I spent. Oh, no. I got a five. Well, theoretically, we know that it's one in six chance for you to get a six. So if that's the case, then you're going to pay $120 by the time you've actually 
won $100. So this one finally is a good game for the carnival because they're going to earn $120 for every $100 in prizes they give out. So this lesson is all about expected value, and it's about how to create a game that actually earns money for the carnival. Remember, that's what you're going to be doing in part two of this project. But we're going to have a little fun right now. We're going to watch a short YouTube video called Carnival Scam Science. And you're going to find the link to Carnival Scam Science on the Lesson 5 um, page on our website. So go ahead and watch this video. We're going to come back to it and talk about it a little bit afterwards. Go ahead and find the link. We'll see you in just a few minutes. My guess is that you've actually been to a carnival before and you've experienced some of these things. Maybe you've played the basketball game where you're shooting baskets on a hoop that is about 11 feet tall (laughs) instead of 10. You see, muscle memory would have us shooting uh, normally uh, at a 10-foot basketball hoop and not 11 feet. Also, you notice those hoops aren't as wide as they are in real life. Did you know you can fit two basketballs side by side through one basketball hoop? Not in a carnival. No way. All right. Well, yeah, there's games of chance and games of skill. And then from the video, he talks about games that are outright impossible. If you're going to make a game like that, you better make people think that it is actually possible or big gigantic prize that lures people into the game thinking I could win that big giant pink teddy bear if I play this game. I know it's a low chance of winning, but mm, that big pink teddy bear would be would be so awesome. All right. Well, uh, this will be fun moving forward and seeing what kinds of games you actually design uh, for this project. But before we get to that, we need to learn specifically about expected value. We need to learn how to calculate this. So I'm going to ask you to take out your lecture notes. We're going to spend a few minutes writing some things down, learning about how to calculate expected value um, and using that information as we move forward. So go ahead and take out your lesson five notes. Okay, so here we are, Lesson 5, Lecture Notes, Expected Values. First thing we're going to do is define expected value. The expected value of a game is the sum of all of the products. So sum of all of the products. Remember what a product is, is when you multiply two things together. Of each value, of each outcome, and the corresponding probability. I'm just going to write in a probability. All right, so what is the formula for this? The formula will look like this. We're talking about the sum of the product. So we know we're going to be multiplying some things together, and then we're going to be adding some things together. So here's our formula. X is the value of the outcome. We're going to write this down below. And then P would be exactly what you would think it is. The probability. Of the outcome. So the value of the outcome multiplied times the probability of the outcome. And then we have to add a whole bunch of things together because it will depend on how many different outcomes we're talking about here. So, our value, our first value of whatever outcome, we'll call that x1, multiplied times the probability 
of that outcome, probability one, added to outcome two, x2, times its particular, whoops, <laughs> probability, probability two. And then we just have to continue that until all outcomes are accounted for. So it really depends on how many different outcomes there are. So if we have, an, um, if we're flipping a coin, it's two outcomes. If we are rolling a die, it is six outcomes, like we talked about just a few minutes ago. So we're going to use this formula and figure out if this sample spinner disk um, will give us a profitable game for the carnival or if it will actually be worth playing for the player. Because we know that there are some games that you can play that just seem so impossible that you're probably not even going to spend your money playing them. Let's picture that there are 400 bottles and you have to throw a ring onto one bottle as a star on it. And if you win, you get this big giant teddy bear. Um, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to do that. You might try a couple, watch other people play and it'll be ridiculous and you'll be like, no way can I win that game. All right, so uh, let's take this um, example spinner game. I will go ahead and draw a picture of this. You have this in your notes. Mine will not be particularly pretty, but that's okay. All right, so it's broken down into four quadrants, and this quadrant in the bottom left-hand corner is broken in half again in the eights, and we have a dollar represented there in the spinner, and $10, that'd be great if you could land on that, $0 in this one, and $2 in that one, and then again, $0 in this one over here. So that's the spinner game, and you can imagine that there's a little spinner, and you just flick that with your finger, and it goes all around and hopefully lands on something that, that wins you a prize. Uh, let's say this spinner game costs a dollar to play. That means that everybody who plays this spinner game is automatically going to lose a dollar at the start of the game. We have to keep that in mind because these games are not free, and you have to account for uh, the fact that you are going to pay to play. That's the way all the carnival games are. Uh, the best way to see if this is fair or skewed towards the house or maybe skewed towards the player is to create a T-chart and then take the information from the T-chart into our formula for expected value. So here's what our T-chart would look like. We would put outcomes on the top and probabilities on the bottom. And we will write all of our possible outcomes across the top, and we'll write the corresponding probability for each one of those outcomes. So we know that to spin this, you have to pay a dollar. So one of the outcomes for sure for every single person is minus one, because they are going to lose a dollar. And um, they have a 100% uh, chance of that happening, uh, or we'll just call it one for now. Because remember, probabilities can be written as fractions or decimals or as percentages. Uh, we know that they could spin a zero. Uh, there's a really good likelihood of that. As a matter of fact, it's one out of two. And they could get a one. There's only a one out of eight chance of one. They could get a two. And there's a one out of four chance they could get a two. Or they could actually get the big prize, which is $10. And that's um, only a one out of eight chance of getting $10. So remember, what we have to do is we have to take the outcomes and multiply them times the probabilities, the corresponding probability, and then we have to add them all together to see what we actually get. So here's how this looks. Solving for expected. I'll try my best to get this on this screen. All right, so uh, the expected value. is going to be equal to, in this case, a negative 1 times 1 
we're up here, plus 0 times 1 half. That should jump out you at you right away as something you really don't even have to write down because 0 times anything is 0, plus 1 times 1 eighth. plus 2 times 1 fourth, and then plus 10 times 1 eighth. So we really just have to go back to some basic math here. Um, 1 is, well, eighth is a really good denominator to work with here. So if we, if we make this 1, 8 eighths, and this one half, four eighths, and of course one eighth already, and two eighths, and of course one eighth. Then we can just multiply these out. Negative times eight eighths is negative eight eighths. Zero, this one is just going to be plus zero. And this one is plus one eighth, because one times one eighth is one eighth. This one is going to be plus ooh, four eighths, two times two eighths, four eighths. And then finally plus ten eighths. So we have a minus eight eighths. Well, we have a whole bunch of pluses, plus 5 eighths, plus 15 eighths, minus, uh, minus 8 eighths. We end up with 7 eighths. And 7 eighths is equal to the decimal 0.875. All right, so, or 87 and a half cents, or 0.875 dollars, all right? So what does that mean? Well, the meaning of the expected value number. In this scenario, the expected value, so the expected value, make sure, is 0.875, that means that you can expect to win. This is if you're the player. On average, on average now, this is important because it's based on probability, 0.875 dollars per game played. So, this is good for the player. Okay, good for the player. Bad <laughs> for the house. The carnival has to have games that make money for the carnival. Again, if they can't make money for the carnival, they're not going to be able to pay their expenses. So, this whole concept of expected value is really, really, really important for your carnival games. And we're going to do a little bit of practice. So we have an activity in the code app uh, that we're going to use a code app app for. Uh, it's, it, we have designed three mystery disks. And the mystery disks are either skewed towards the player, or they're skewed for the house, or they're fair. So one of them is for the house, one is for the player, and one is fair. If you go to the lesson plan page, you will find for lesson five, activity one, a, uh, a printout, uh, something that you can print out in multiple formats, just like we have for all of our assignments. Or you can do it digitally. That's completely up to you. Uh, and you will see the three different mystery disks. And if you go to the Code App app, you can see the mystery disks there too. So I'm going to just briefly go to the Code App app. 
There we go. So here it is. And for the spinner game, we'll see Mystery Disc 1, Mystery Disc 2, and Mystery Disc 3. And all three of these Mystery Discs are actually printed out for you on the Activity 1. And you can use the Code App app to find all kinds of data about these too. But you're going to be calculating some expected values of these three Mystery Discs. So go ahead and do the Activity 1. should take about 15 minutes, and we'll meet back here uh, after you're done. Good luck. Welcome back. I hope you're learning something about expected value. I hope it's starting to make sense to you and you're, you're thinking about how you can apply this to your own carnival games that you have made. Uh, we have another activity that we would like you to do for uh, expected value. It's called Activity 2. I know, very creative. And it has to do with you making your own spinner discs. Now, when we started this Carnival Tycoon project, we did this in the classroom. Uh, right now we are in the middle of a pandemic, and that's why we have changed over to the virtual format. But when we were in the classroom, we actually printed these discs. So you can see this is a disc that has a spinner on it. And it has these options of $0, $1, $10, $0, $2. All right, very similar to something that you've seen uh, recently in the notes, maybe. And you spin it, and you come up with whatever you come up with. And here's a different one. You can see, notice that half of this one is zero dollars, then 75 cents and a dollar as options. And then finally, this one here, this one's a little tougher to see because we printed it, 3D printed it out of black material, but it's got a two dollar, a 150, a zero, and a 50 cents. And you could spin that and collect data from that. Well, what we've done is we have created, of course, the Codap app. Uh, well, well, we've used the Codap app to, um, for our own purposes of making these mystery discs. And we've also given you the opportunity to make your own discs. So I want to briefly just show you something in the Codap app. Uh, there is uh, a better video for directions on how to use the Codap app for various things like spinner discs and whatnot on our webpage. But I'll briefly show you what you're going to do. And then you'll be designing your own spinners and doing activity two that will have you uh, learning if your spinner is fair or it's skewed towards the house or it's skewed towards the player. So let's take a look at Co the Codap app one more time. So here we are back at uh, codap.concord.org and we have chosen the spinner. And right now it is on a mystery disc. But if you click on this, you see that you've got ones that are guaranteed to be house skewed, fair, or player skewed. Then we have the three mystery, mystery discs that we did for Activity 1. Uh, but we also have Custom. So when we choose Custom, you'll notice a little window pops up that asks us what we want our values to be. So I'm just going to type in a couple things here. We're going to go uh, $0. You don't even really have to put the dollar sign in, but I think I will. $0, $1, whoops, $1. Uh, we'll go two dollars. We'll go five dollars, and let's do a biggie. Well, let's do yeah, let's do let's do a hundred dollars just for fun. One hundred dollars, and we click OK, and you're going to see that all those come up here. All right, so I have all these different possible choices, but I can manipulate these and change these around a little bit, or I can make certain ones bigger. I can add more sections, for instance. So if I add that, notice I have two $1 sections now. Uh, let's go ahead and add another one and another one and another one. We don't want this $100 section to be too big, um, or maybe we do. I don't know. It's completely up to you. You can design this however you would like to design it. Zero, one, two, five, a $100, one. And then we'd like you to run this 100 times and collect data from this. So I, I have already set this to select 100 items, collecting one sample from 100 items. And I have also already set up the um, data table here. Or the data here is automatic, but over here I have chosen a graph. 
And in the graph, I have chosen value for the y-axis. Uh, this is something you'll see more in the video. The video will show you how to do this because this is going to put all of what we spin into bins that are really easy to calculate. So let's go ahead and just run this thing. It's set for, I think, really, 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 really fast uh, right now. So you're not even going to see the spins. You're just going to see a whole bunch of data come real fast. So I'll go ahead and start this real fast. And notice this, this would be all the results that we got from 100 spins. And I can look at it individually if I really want to. But uh, what's more interesting is if I look over here on this graph, you'll notice that I had $0, $5, $100, $2, $1. Okay? And you'll see that the values in are represented by each of these numbers. Um, there were 11 spins that yielded 0. There were 17 spins that yielded 5. Unfortunately for the carnival, there were 15 spins that yielded $100. Surprisingly, there were none that yielded two. I know that's strange, but it just is what it is. That, that happens. This is probability. And then a whole bunch that yielded $1. So notice that there's nothing in here that talks about the price to pay the game. So a game like this would require a certain amount of money to be paid in order to be fair. And if you paid less than that, it would be uh, good for the player. And if you paid more than that, it would be good for the house. So your job is to design your own spinner, and you'll end up sketching that spinner out on Activity 2, and you'll be collecting data from 100 spins, and you'll be analyzing it and doing some expected value calculations and explaining if your particular spinner that you have made digitally using our CodeApp app uh, is fair skewed for the player or skewed for the house. This is really, really important information, and it's really important skill to have because remember what we're doing next. Part two of the project involves you designing your own carnival game to try to pitch to the carnival game owners as the next great carnival game for this coming year. So go ahead and open the uh, lesson, uh, activity two for lesson five. You'll find all the different formats uh, on the lesson plan page, as always. And then we'll meet back together to briefly and, well, we're actually really close to the end of our lesson. We've got some reflections to do as well as just a couple practice problems. And then moving on to part two, building your carnival games. But for now, go ahead to activity two for lesson five. So how did you do on Activity 2 for Lesson 5? Did you create a spinner game that you thought was fair and it ended up being skewed towards the house or the player? Or was it the opposite way around? You thought you were making a game that was good for the house, but it actually ended up being good for the player. Well, you see, it's all about the calculations, and hopefully you understand how to calculate expected value at this point. Two things left to go. We Lesson Five reflections as always and you will find lesson five reflections on the lesson plan page for lesson five in all the formats that you need and we have four more problems to work in our problems packet we haven't done problems in a little bit so you'll find the last four problems that go along with expected value in the packet so I'm just going to sign off right now and assign both of those things to you the Lesson 5 Reflections, and Problem 1 through 4, the last four problems in your packet. And once you're done with that, we're moving on to Part 2 of the project, which is so much fun. It's designing our own carnival games. Best of luck to you. I'll see you soon.